Hi, Salut. I'm Sebastian. Moi, Sebastian. I'm traveling around the world in search of kings of resourcefulness, those who face a lack of resources with extraordinary intelligence. So today I'm in Cuba, Cuba, with the D-System is like the holy land. Between the American blockade and the fall of the socialist camp, the country was left with nothing. No industry, no equipment, no money, no raw materials. The only recourse they had for the last almost 60 years is their intelligence. The new explorers in Cuba are here. And Domino's too. The D system in Cuba is a state religion. In the early 60s, when the Americans started repatriating everything, all the equipment, engineers, and so on, the then Minister of Industry created ANIR, the National Association of Innovators and Rationalizers. Rationalizers to improve productivity and innovators to guarantee after-sales service to repair all the machines. And so when workers invented a new trick. It was recorded by ANIR. Oh, and the Minister of Industry at the time was a certain Ernesto Guevara. Maybe he's the one who invented the D-System. Ah, also, my mother. She has a chest set that belonged to Che. I may well be his son. I'll have to ask her. Salsa, rum, cigars, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara. Cuba is the best known of the Caribbean islands. It's one of the last vestiges of the Cold War, one of the world's most isolated countries. Here, since 1959, all sectors of the economy have been state-run. Want to be a cab driver? You have to get authorization from the cab driver's committee. You can sell popcorn on the street, but you have to ask the Ministry of Popcorn. It's a bit cumbersome, but there are advantages too. In Cuba, education and healthcare are free for all. One of Anir's most important departments is the Electromedicine Department. Cuba has one of the best performing healthcare systems in the world. And to treat people, you need machines in hospitals. And you can't buy these machines in Cuba. You have to fix them. I'm taking you to a building that doesn't look like much the backyard of the Cuban healthcare system. This is where our everyday heroes work. Welcome to the maze of Cuban bureaucracy. It never ends. Hello, gentlemen. I'm Sebastian. I won't remember all your names. So, what's this? A centrifuge. And what's the problem? Look at this model. Look at the state of it. We had to take it apart. This is the result of poor manufacturing. At the same time, it really is Chinese. No, but sometimes they do good things. The problem is that many components generate heat, and so it burns everything inside. So, we, well especially him, he spotted elements that overheat with the current. I removed them, rewired them, that's all. Nothing more. We still had to readjust the switches. When we reconnected the wires, we realized that the machine was still on. So we managed to install a switch at the input. And that's how it works? Yeah, without problems. It never heated up again? Never. These are electronic cards we bought. Well, a month after we bought them, they were all broken. Just one month? Yes, all of them. Chinese? Yes, they're Chinese. This transistor resists a strong current, but only up to a certain temperature, and then, well, we're in Cuba. And in Cuba, it's very hot. So at the input here, we had to put two transistors in parallel. We used to put a small cable in and connect the second one to the outside without any problem. After that, we bought more cards and did this for each of them. And look, thanks to us now, the Chinese are making cards with two transistors. With 40 hospitals in the region, that's more than 50 resourceful geniuses who have to work around the clock every day of the week to maintain the excellent reputation of the Cuban healthcare system. And in the electromedicine sector, even the coffee break is an excuse to innovate. With the heat you lose, you could heat things up. Let's see what happens. 
This machine is used by ophthalmologists to measure spectacle correction, whether positive or negative. And the only bulb you have is too big, right? Yes, look, we can't close it. Okay. So we're going to lower the base of the support. Okay. That way, we can put the bulb in and close it again. Okay, perfect. Hello, Sebastian. I'm Daniel. Pleased to meet you, Sebastian. You're all Daniels. He's the sixth. Daniel? No. Okay, hi, Sebastian. Don't let their looks fool you. Under their barca and real jerseys, they are the country's best and most profitable engineers. Thanks to them, even the smallest bolt is recovered and reused. And what's your name? Raul. Raul has been here for two months. He has already saved the capital's hospitals for a thousand euros. How long will it take you to fix it? Three days? On a block like this, I can spend a whole day on it. And that can't be bought? Yes, yes, it can be bought. But it's expensive. Yes, they are expensive. A valve like this costs around 80 euros and a block contains 20. This one's broken. I'll show you what we found. We found this when there was a major crisis and we had nothing to trade it for. And we learned a lot in the process. Ah, look. This is a small screw. This is the hole that controls the flow. All valves are identical, only this part is different. We dismantle the one that no longer works. This way, we have spare parts to carry out repairs. But that's very difficult to manufacture, isn't it? Right. You have to be very, very precise. The perforation must be very precise. And you can't do that. And the manufacturer won't sell you this part. He'll only sell you the whole valve. The manufacturer won't sell you this part. He won't even give you the information to repair the valves. He sells them to you and says when it breaks, you buy another one. Where's he from? He's German. <laughs> I'm going to see a hospital, the only one the authorities have allowed me to visit. And they said in every hospital in the country, you'll find surgeons who go the extra mile. Cuba has the highest ratio of doctors per capita in the world. And that's not counting the 40,000 doctors and nurses working abroad, bringing in over $6 billion a year for the state. Three times more than tourism. Here, they are considered heroes of the nation. Every day, they face a cruel lack of equipment. Dr. Yandy is one of the country's leading surgeons. What sets him apart is that he makes his own surgical equipment. Demonstration. As you know, macroscopic surgery is very expensive. Especially the equipment. For example, we have this device. This is a hooked coagulation electrode. When we started five years ago, we had two. Every day, we operated on five or six cases. So it was an intense use. So after two years, they broke. Okay. So we started to weld it and file it down to recover it. But we realized that the solution wasn't just to repair the ones that broke. It was also to increase the quantity to avoid intensive use. So we took this instrument. It is used to extract air from the lungs. It's a suction catheter for chest tires. Okay. This tool has the same length and diameter characteristics as the electrode. And it doesn't oxidize. At first, a piece of iron was welded to make the hook, but it kept breaking. So we decided to sculpt the tip. 
As a result, it's made from just one piece and won't come loose. We've also installed a pen-shaped handle for easier handling, but also because it's easy to dismantle. If it's dirty, it's easy to clean. The other important thing is that this part must have insulation. And we didn't have this insulation. So we took this suction probe, which anesthetists use to suction nasal or throat secretions. Once he's used it, he throws it away, but we recover it and use it as insulation. We've had this one for two years now, and it's never broken. Anyway, if it breaks, it can always be repaired. In recent years, in the style of the People's Republic of China, the country is opening up to liberalism, offering the possibility of setting up a small business and finally working for oneself. Everyone has their own little idea for making ends meet, but the dual currency system complicates matters and keeps Cubans under control. On the one hand, there's the convertible peso, equivalent to the dollar and intended for tourists. And on the other, the peso, which is obligatory for Cubans and has no official value outside the country. How much? Five pesos. Can you explain how it works? So there's the switch. Now it turns. Where does the engine come from? The motor is a washing motor, a washing wiper motor, you know, on windshields. Okay. And you made it. Yes, this is the transformer, and this is where the current comes in. I plug in behind it. Okay. And you ask the municipality? Yes, I give them the money. But tell me, why do you need an engine? So that the corn turns and doesn't burn. But you're a genius. That's how we save money. <laughs> Great. It's clear. Perfect. Thank you very much. So Cubans practice what's known as technological resistance. When they look at a washing machine, they don't see it. They see metal plates in an engine, rubber tubes, and a drum. So it should come as no surprise that when they find a windshield wiper motor, they manage to build a popcorn machine. It's a typical Cuban reflex. If they see people queuing in a store, the Cuban joins the queue. And then they ask what's in the store. Because if there's a queue, it means there is something. Hi, I'll have a little guarapo. How much is it? Two pesos. Two pesos? Yes, but local pesos. But now? But which ones are they? These ones? I don't understand this stuff about Cuban pesos and convertible pesos. It's pure cane sugar. And how do you do it? Hang on, I'll show you. Let's see. Where are you? Where have you gone? Oh, right, it's a shredder. Where does it come out? Ah, it comes out of here and you filter it. And you do it twice? No, three times.
This is the engine, but I don't know where it's from. Stuff we pick up around the country. After that, it's made Cuban style. Here, you know, you have to survive. And it's done all over the country? Yes, everyone makes it that way. Many people own a Gore Opera. You'll find them in all the provinces. <laughs> and then we put the juice in ice. Sí. And you serve it. Excuse me, I wanted to ask you, who makes these glasses? His name is Omar, and he lives in Kojimar. He cuts bottles and sands them. Does he have a workshop to do all this? Yes, he has a workshop. He makes these out of rum, beer, and soda bottles. Okay, well I'll try to find it. Yes, honey, Kojimar isn't far away. Thank you very much. Excuse me, can I ask you something? Do you know Omar, the one who makes the glasses? No, you don't. Fifty years ago, Kojimar was a tiny fishing village. It's actually where Ernest Hemingway used to come to relax, and it was there that he came up with the old man and the sea. The problem is that today, there are over 20,000 inhabitants. If it was seaside, I'd know. And to find Omar, the old man who makes the glasses, it's a bit complicated. It's the greenhouse over there. Excuse me, can I ask you something, Omar's house? It's not that one. It's the next one. Well, it was a bit of a struggle to get to Kojimar. That's where Omar, the man who makes glasses out of recycled bottles, is, I think. I'm told there's greenery. Is this Omar's house? Is that you? Yes, it's me, since 1947. I'm Sebastian. And since 1972. Oh, not bad. <laughs> what you're going to see is the workshop of a man who believes that nothing goes to waste. Everything is possible. Everything can be used. That's what I think. Here, I invent everything. You see, this is a synchronous motor that used to be in a 16 millimeter projector. I salvaged it. As for television, they've changed technology. What do you mean? Did you buy it? No, they were going to throw it away. They gave it to me to thank me for my work. You see, this engine dates back to 1948. So this is for sanding glass. Let me show you a bottle. Let's get a bottle. The neighbors bring them to you. You know, here in Cuba, we sort things. And you sell it? Actually, I only use the ones that can't be recycled. This one's not recyclable. No, look, it's a foreign brand. In fact, anything not made here is never recycled. Anything imported is useless. That's good. That way everyone can work. It should be wetted beforehand to facilitate cutting. That's a blade I stuck in the table. Okay. What next? The next step is to heat the notch. Okay. It's not quite stable, but it works. Depending on the bottles, I have different sizes, different calibers. And then you spun it around? Mm-hmm. And it will cut itself? Yes, you have to turn very slowly. And it breaks, that's it, it's broken. Actually, when I have about 30 to do, I cut them all at once and then sand them. Okay, you don't do them one by one. Yes, you see here, the cut is not regular. I'll have to sand it down to make sure it's even. Since it's broken, I don't think I'll finish it. You're not going to do it. No, there's no point. 
it will break too quickly. Okay, I get it. When you cut it wrong, you don't finish it. Wait here, I'll get you something. <laughs> That's not from a bottle of booze. No, they were perfume bottles. <laughs> really? Amazing. And as a result, they make cognac glasses. <laughs> now you taste this and tell me what you think. It's slipping out of my hands. Mm. So, what is it? Cuban rum? It's Cuban rum, but... Is it an old rum? Or different? It's different. It's something I do. Old rum is expensive. So I take a low-quality rum... You add a little taste. I'll give you the secret. That way, when you get home, you can do it again. This is a food coloring agent used in the restaurant trade. No, they sell it in pharmacies. It's a plant extract mixed with 90% alcohol. Will I go blind if I try? No, 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 no. Oh, it's strong. It's a product used to treat diarrhea and to... <laughs> it's used for everything. It's a medicine. Yes, it's sold in pharmacies is also used for fungal infections, for feet. You realize what you're drinking? Can I mix it? Go ahead, don't be shy. You see, we're fighting for money, man. Tell him I have fish of all sizes. He says he has four centimeter fish. Can I bet? Of course. They're going to street fight? Two are thrown into a jar. In there? Yeah, in the jar, and then they go at it. You shouldn't have even brought that thing with you. Your fish is twice as big as mine. Wait, maybe these two. They're practically identical. What I want you to understand is that I'll never make my fish fight a bigger one. Look at the fish you've brought me. It's disrespectful. I found a small one. We're ready to enter the ring. One of them is turning black now. When the blue fish changes color, that's it. They're going to turn black. Little by little. They watch each other, test their strength, and then the fight begins. There, you've got a touch. Yours gave a blow there. No, two. I lead with two shots. Look how it jumps on him. It jumps on him. I can't see if it's touching. Mine hit! It hit! I don't get it. I don't know who wins. Black is starting to look bad. Do they bite? Yes, they bite each other's faces. Did you lose? My fish never lose. Ask anyone. My fish, do they lose? Go on, ask everyone, ask them. Do these fish lose? Champions League. <laughs> yeah, it's the Champions League with me. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. It's carnage. In spring, millions of crabs try to make their way to the ocean because the females have eggs, so they have to leave them in the water and cross the road. So the thing is, when cars come, the crabs move into attack position, and if you drive over them, the claw gets stuck in the tire. 
Here, on this road, there are more than 10 cars that have to change their tires per day. We're off to Trinidad because someone's found a job there. He repairs tires. He's got a puncture. Oh, come here because we have a guy who can fix it. Here we are in Trinidad, a 500-year-old city. Yes, as we can see, it's very touristy, but I've stopped here to see Felix. He's not the only one, but he's the best. Flat tire repairer. He repairs all kinds of tires, old ones with tubes, but also new ones. Those without inner tubes are known as tubeless. Felix. It's the crabs. How do you know it was the crabs that punctured the tire? The tire must be disassembled to find the crab claw. When the clamp penetrates the tire and breaks, it creates a pipe. The tip breaks and the air is expelled very quickly. But last night when we arrived, it was fine. It must be a small crab, because the pipe is small. Ah, uh, okay, it's small. Yeah, the road was full of crabs. In fact, we stopped to take photos and when we tried to leave, they were all back on the pavement. Can you help? Because we'd really like to go to the beach. No problem at all. This is a tubeless tire. There's no inner tube. Yes, according to the repairs here, it had already been punctured. They rented it to us like this. That'll work, don't worry. Here, they have the art of getting by. Yes, but I want them to have the art of returning my van tomorrow. Because if we get a flat tire in the night, we'll have to sleep on the road. Look how he fixes the wheel. I also want to change your old patch. It didn't have a problem, but I'll change it for you just to be sure. You never know. <laughs> Look how he does it. Look. Here we pass it through the hole again. The hole wasn't big. The needle will have trouble passing a second time. If they're used, they won't work. <laughs> now I take this rubber. It's like glue. And it's from this that you vulcanize. It's a glue, yes, but I need to work on it. And then you put it in the petrol. And that's how you put the tire back on. And that's it? Yes, it's all thanks to our condom buddies. It's for work. <laughs> if I get a flat tire tonight, I've got everything I need. <laughs> and now we're putting the wheel back together. That's it. You can go to the beach, gentlemen. <laughs> Santiago, the country's rebel town. 
It was from here that the War of Independence against Spain and the Castro Revolution against Batista began. What's interesting to see is that the country's history can be seen through the equipment. Until 1959, the equipment was American. The cars are American. The services are American. And when the revolution came, they repatriated everything. Doctors, engineers, equipment, and all that. They left Cuba with nothing. I'm here in Santiago to show you another side of the economy that the Cubans have managed to maintain, despite the lack of spare parts. Yes, wood. Le bois. We're 60 kilometers from Santiago, in a sawmill. We're still within the ANIR framework. It's this government unit that brings together all the day-to-day -day inventions, the D system. Cuban industry is based on the D system. Hello. Hello. Sebastian. Thomas. How many people work here? 25. 25? Yes, 25 good men work here. For these woodworkers, some of whom have been working here since Castro came to power, there is only one objective, to keep their tools of the trade alive. They work with one of the oldest mechanical saws in the world. It's still alive, but only thanks to their ability to adapt. Manufactured on September 27, 1904. That's also what the D system is all about, extending the life of equipment as far as possible. In the beginning, there were two steam engines. Electricity arrived in the provinces during the Castro Revolution. That's when we fitted an electric motor. We've adapted. Claro. It's a Soviet engine, isn't it? Yes. Oh, there we go. This is the heart of the machine. How many times a day do you change them? Every three to four hours. But we still take a look every two hours, in case there's a small crack, so you can repair it in time. Okay. Yeah. To prevent the crack from expanding. Okay. After four hours, you take it apart? Yes, and if it's okay, we grind it. Is the machine 100 years old, too? Yes, she's the other guy's girlfriend. <laughs> and why do they have to be changed every four hours? This is to prevent them from overheating. And where does this engine come from? From the USSR. Oh, it comes from the USSR. What about this one? It's American. You've changed everything. Initially, we had to make a modification because the engine speed was unbearable. The machine was driving us crazy. It went ooh ooh. There was nothing we could do. A larger pulley had to be made to change the frequency. There was a small pulley, but we combined it with a larger one and were able to regulate the work rate. Our job is to ensure that it runs smoothly and efficiently. Without that, we wouldn't get very far. The oldest sawmill in the country also has a tradition. Coffee after work. But I still feel like I'm being fooled because the coffee, it's not black.
anyway, in Cuba, with a chainsaw engine, they make mopeds. What's going on? The border guards are over there. It's a bit tricky because they're unofficial fishermen. So anything unofficial in this country is considered an enemy of the state. And there's another thing you should know. In Cuba, the border is here. And anyone in a boat that goes outside it is considered to be someone who wants to leave. The sea is aggressive. As your boats are light, you can't get into the water. We got thrown out. We freaked out more than once. It's when you get in the water that it's dangerous. And if a boat arrives, we can't stay in its path. The sea is a little high and a little strong. It sounds a little lively, so they can't go out with the boats. Well, let's come back tomorrow. And if the sea is like this tomorrow, I'll be back again. I'll keep coming back until the sea is clear and we can see them go off to fish in their superb boat. In Cuba, retirement is at 65. The problem is that it's 9 euros a month, so you have to find a second job. We're going to see a retired gentleman who recycles neon lights. This is where Yves Rio lives. Good morning. Yves Rio? That's me. Sebastian. Yves Rio is a bookseller, but like any Cuban, he knows how to use his 10 fingers. I get the impression that every Cuban has a workshop at home. Every time I go into someone's home, there's a part of the house that's used for making things. In Cuba, there are people who make beautiful things. You clean them? Yes, I have to. Show me how you do it, after. I'll show you right away. Iverio's technique is simple. He simply heats the glass and shapes it to give it the desired appearance. His specialty is signs. And how did you learn to do that? from a Czechoslovakian. A Czechoslovakian? But that was a long time ago. Oh, the country doesn't even exist anymore. That was over 20 years ago. And he taught you that in Czechoslovakia? No, he came here. And how do you do the color? With coloring. And how do you get the dye? You buy it? Yes, it's a garment dye I bought nearby. Ah, you put it in and then close it. It's perfect. There's even a bubble. My pension is 270 pesos. Converted, it is $9. And you have to sell all this? Obviously. Nine dollars. It's almost nothing. It's crap. You go buy milk and oil. And in three days you have nothing. I 
couldn't come to Cuba without talking about cars. The old American ones that have lasted for over 60 years, which continue to run as if they're levitating. I'm with Luis, my cab friend. Cab amigo. <laughs> He's taking me to see his mechanic friend, who works wonders. Hello? Luis told me that his old Ford had a Hyundai engine. Hyundai. Here, there was a V8 engine. You know what a V8 engine is? More or less. Adapting the Hyundai engine isn't too complicated, because there's plenty of room. I took advantage of the hooks on the base of this car to adapt it to the new engine. I did, however, build a bridge between the Hyundai base and the Ford base. And now it consumes less fuel than when it had its original engine. Right now, I don't know. It should consume one liter for 15 kilometers. Before, it was one liter for five kilometers. Would you like me to show you something interesting? The only Cadillac Eldorado in Cuba. I'd like to see. It's the only one in Cuba. Only 300 left in the world. That color. I love the color. Do you like the color? It's 1959's color. I found it on the internet. That's dirt. Look, the tires are from 1959. How do you maintain it? If you look closely, they've been vulcanized. Uh -huh. You can see it up close. The white band is original. It's nickel-plated. Okay. It's the same story. I had a lot of problems. For example, in the U.S., the air filter is a huge thing. It's over there. So I made a smaller, sportier one, you see. Look, I use two lids. These are aluminum pot lids. This is a filter from another car. It's Russian, or it could be from anywhere. And I made this. Did you do it? I have it made, and then I put it all together. Is that Chinese? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Look, this is the original air filter. Okay. We prefer Russian equipment to Chinese. Huh. When we were on the Soviet side, things were, how can I put it, very rough, really ugly, but they were good quality. I fixed the steering. It's a 1956 Dodge. I managed to fit a Peugeot power steering system. Look at this. It's aluminum and it's made here. You can see from the details that it's handmade. Made by Dunlop Roux, France. <laughs> How much does a car like that sell for? It's 15,000 euros. 20,000 pesos. The Cuban identity is him, Ibrahim. Thank you. No, it was a pleasure. Do you want to wash your hands? No, it's okay. I didn't touch anything. I didn't do anything. The sea has calmed down. They'll be able to go fishing. And they're not here. We'll wait for them. For now, I'll do some Tai Chi. Are you all right? So today, you can go out. Yes. Buenas, Sebastian. ¿Cómo estás? Bien. You sit here or there. The advantage of the polystyrene boat is that you can sit wherever you like. But don't move around too much. You can take two people out on boats like that, right? Of course you can. That's better. That way, you don't get bored. <laughs> of course. Everything is important in this boat. The wood is like bones, a sort of skeleton. The structure. We use the wood as a clamp. To hold the polystyrene. 
This was salvaged from building sites. You can buy it too. There's water coming through here. Of course, it's a fish tank to keep fish alive. That way, they're fresher. You can use sardines, seafood, even the oars, which you made yourself. Yes, we did it all. <laughs> Everything here is rustic and handmade. <laughs> this is the only country in the world where you'll see people fishing like this. Cubans have imagination. We're surrounded by water and few people have the opportunity to own a boat. So you need imagination. And is that allowed or just tolerated? Depends on the season. Sometimes they confiscate our equipment and fine us. But these boats are fragile, aren't they? Even on the rocks? On the rocks, yes. If a wave catches you, the boat breaks. Once you're at sea, it's perfect. It's unsinkable. If you hit the rocks, everything breaks, including the boards. But when the sea is like this, there's no problem. It's safer than a real boat. We throw it on the bottom with a big wire so that the boat doesn't move. Okay, it's the anchor. So that the current doesn't take us out to sea. That's how you don't drift. Otherwise, we'd go too far. You fall asleep and wake up in Miami. <laughs> Good luck. It's a maneuver. Hurry up, there's a wave coming. There we go, he's out. It reminds me of Papillon, the Steve McQueen film. He gets away by throwing bags of coconuts. Well, this is polystyrene. What the hell is this? That's so the line can go further. Are those condoms? Yes, for fishing. Do you fish with condoms here? We throw the line and we're off. It's to be able to fish further out. I just figured out what it was for. So when the wind blows from land to sea, they can send the line further out. A lot further out. That's not good. The cork and the condoms are tied together. They move away from the shore and they can fish much further. What if a boat goes by? You always have to look. The boats come from over there. You always have to look because if a boat goes by, it cuts you off. Here people invent a lot. Look, this lure was made with a toothbrush. See? It looks like a fish. The real ones have to be imported from Miami, and that's very expensive. And this, you see, is to keep it stable. Even if you pull on it, it won't budge. The calamari hooks here. The dark soul loves itself. I've caught a lot of fish here. About a month ago, I caught a six-pound bass fish. Like that, with balloons. <laughs> with condoms. Yeah, I was holding the line in my hand, and then I thought, holy shit, this is heavy stuff. So I pulled and brought him in. You caught it with this? Yes, with this. Be careful, there aren't many left. What? There's none here. No, they're nowhere to be found. What do you mean? They're all gone. Well, I'll give you this then. Oh, man. Thanks. I'm leaving tomorrow. I don't need it anymore. Uh, you're not going to use it. But you still have one more night, right? Leave me one then. 
Sure you only want one? Two. Sure? 